exciting days. So I think the baskets are gonna go round. Well, last week we were talking about entering His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. And I, I wanna talk a little bit about what we do when we enter His courts. And uh, I, I just dropped in that last Sunday, I felt the Lord say, talk about dance. So I know that's tweaked some of your interest in what I've got to say on dance and whether or not you will see me dancing. Well, you have to wait right to the end to find out. <laughs> if you've got a Bible, um, why don't you turn to 2 Samuel 6. You can turn to it on your phone. I'm gonna, I've got a, I think I said a few weeks, a new Bible. So I'm reading from the New King James Version. So if you have a phone, you, I know you can switch your versions. And, and we've, here we've been really feeling just to, that we should honour the Word of God. You know, that my words are, are down here compared to His Word. So when we read His Word, we stand. So why don't you stand again? I know it's up, down, up, down, but um, most of us need the exercise. So stand up and we're gonna read. This is 2 Samuel 6, verse 12. Now it was told King David saying, the Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because, the, because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with gladness. And so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces that he sacrificed oxen and fattened sheep. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might and David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with his shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Now, as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through the window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it. Then David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. And when David had finished offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. Then he distributed among all the people, among the whole multitude of Israel, both the women and the men to everyone, a loaf of bread, a piece of meat and a cake of raisins. So all the people departed, everyone to his house. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how glorious was the King of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants, as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. David said to Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord. I will be even more undignified than this and will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maidservants of whom you have spoken, by them I will be held in honour. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. Amen. Take a seat. So, Last week, what I said was, I wanna put some skin on the bones of what I, what I think the Holy Spirit is, is doing here and has been doing here um, in the, the last uh, few months. Do you know, when, it, when He started to move amongst us, there was great joy. In fact, if you were to ask me, what is the, what is the hallmark of what God is doing here? I would say it's joy. There is a joy welling up. There is a gratitude. There is a praise. Sometimes there's a march. Um, and, and I think there is a dance coming in the presence of the Lord. Now, I speak as a non-dancer. I'm not an expert. Um, I've always danced inwardly. Okay, so when you lot are all at the front dancing outwardly, inside my heart is beating and I'm dancing inwardly. 
Um, and what I would say to you, all you non-dancers, relax, kind of. Okay, it, it'll be almost okay. And, and I, I think I've said over the last few weeks, I've been rethinking Song of Songs. And more and more, I feel that the, this, this book of the Bible is an end time song of the Lord to His church. That yes, it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, it talks about relationships and, and love and sex, but it is a prophetic book of the love that the Lord feels for His church and His church feels for the Lord in the last days. And, and, and verse six talks about the dance of two camps. And I believe that there is a dance that brings heaven and earth together. That when we dance in the presence of the Lord, there is a joining of heaven and earth. So what I wanna talk about this morning is why did David dance? How did David dance? And what was the result? Okay, why, how, what? So, why? David learns the lesson that wherever the presence of God is, and in this case, the ark, there is blessing. Because the household of Obed-Eden treasured the presence of God, there was great blessing that came upon his household. In fact, we read in 1 Chronicles 26, all these were the sons of Obed-Edom. They and their sons and their brethren, able men with strength for the work, 62 of Obed-Edom. You see, when you treasure the presence of God, there is great blessing. Because Obed-Edom hosted the presence, his household was blessed. How? They, he had sons, and I, I expect daughters, because I don't believe you can get 62 sons without any girls, there were, um, um, who were able and strong, or literally of resource and power. That's what it means. And what I want in this church is men and women who are able and strong, literally of resource and power. Because Obed-Edom treasured the presence, his family became 62 young people of wealth and power. You see, in the presence of God, our young will become men and women of resource and power. That's what happens when you grow up in the presence of the Lord. That's what happens when you host the presence of the Lord. That's what happens when you stand in His presence. You can't help but be changed. So because of this, David dances before the ark because the presence of God is coming into the city. And David knows that this blessing will come on all of the people. I'm gonna say it again. The presence of God brings resource and power. You know, what happens when Jesus enters Jerusalem? Remember on Palm Sunday, there's great praise and celebration because God is entering the city. Get it? When God moves in, there is great praise and celebration. The joy we are experiencing is, is because the Holy Spirit is here. He's, something stirs up within us and His resource and power comes upon us to bring freedom, which is why I love the testimony of the first service where, where um, someone has been in this presence of God and he has moved and healed a marriage. And that's what, that, that, what is the fruit of his presence? It's, it's healing, it's salvation, it's marriages restored. God is on the move. You know, Jesus said to his disciples, um, I send the promise of my Father upon you, talking about the Holy Spirit, but wait until you are endued with power from on high. So we are learning to dance in the presence of God because we're finding in His presence is blessing. 
Do you know when the 70 return from their mission, Jesus, Jesus sends the 12 out and then He sends the 70 out. And Luke says, Jesus was in the joy of the Holy Spirit. He was responding to seeing the coming of the Kingdom, the healings, the demons crying out. And they had never seen Jesus like this before. That's why, they, that's why Luke records he was, he was in the joy of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, the, we, don't, we don't know what was happening with Jesus, but such a joy came over Jesus because he saw the kingdom breaking in that we, we see it recorded. That joy is coming upon us. Do you know God is a dancing God? Two, three, I'm not sure. <laughs> Zephaniah 3 says, He rejoices over us. And in, in verse 17, it says it twice. The first rejoice over means He sings over us. And the second rejoice over means He spins around over us, the dance. So literally, God spins around. And so whenever we come into His presence, the wind blows. And what we're doing is we're, we're catching the wind if you like, and He spins us round. And dance is released in worship. That's literally the idea that the wind of God blows through the place and, we, and this joy wells up and we start to celebrate. So often dance in the Bible is talked about whirling or, or spinning or going round. Now, what is happening here, I think, is a response. It's an anticipation of the bridegroom coming. God is on the move. And so we're dancing, kind of. Okay, because we're not quite sure yet if we're allowed to, or if we should be sorry for our sins. Because when you come to church, are you allowed to dance, or you should you be sorry for your sins? Should it be a solemn affair, or should it be a celebration. And there is, so there's that little bit in us that's, well, I, 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 you know, I'm not sure if, I, if I'm allowed to do this, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna take this carefully. I'm not gonna be too crazy. Well, you have a choice. You can feel bad about your sin or you can celebrate that Jesus has freed you from your sin, your choice. You can come and feel bad about it or you can celebrate that you're free. You see, Jesus paid the price for our sin on the cross, all of it. Now, now we come to Him and we confess our sin and He removes it as far as the east is from the west. That's a long way. Now, I am in grief that my sin sent Jesus to the cross. That's how I know I need grace. But He was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit so that I can have a new life marked by joy. He said, I've come that you'd have life and have it to the fullest. Therefore, I have an invitation to rise and join the celebration of heaven. So when we come to church, we are invited in to the celebration of heaven. That's good. Just in case you weren't sure. We, we are invited in to His dance. So why dance? Because we're invited in. How did He dance? He strips off and dances with all of His might. We'll leave the strip off for a moment. Leaping and whirling. I had to look up the whirling bit. It means being nimble and agile. David had the moves. Do you understand that? The issue wasn't that he was a bad dancer. David could dance. The issue was that David was a dancer before the Lord and before the people. David knew how to dance. You know, um, one of the words for dance, uh, uh, rakad, I don't know, I, again, my pronunciation of the Hebrew is terrible. It's, it's, which means to skip or to leap for joy. So when David dances in the Lord, there is no holding back. He does it 100%. It's what the writer of the Hebrews says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us throw it off and do some leaping and whirling. 
That's what He means. Let's get rid of it. Jesus has paid the price. Throw it off. Get rid of it. And, and let's do some leaping and whirling. So whenever we come to church, there should be leaping and whirling. We should finish our thanksgiving and praise exhausted because we've given all of our worship to the Lord. You should go home for a rest. <laughs> no, forget lunch. I just, I just need to get my heart rate down. Psalm 149 says, let, let them praise His Name with dance. For the Lord takes pleasure in His people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. There is something about dance that reflects a humility before the Lord. And I believe it's the key to the release that dance brings. David, David says this, I will be even more undignified than this. And that's the verse we always quote. But he also says, and I will be humble in my own sight. I won't think anything more of myself than I should, especially when I'm in the presence of God. And he was a king who danced. He was the dancing king. I want to be a leader who is humble before the Lord. Maybe even a dancing leader. Now there's a stretch, isn't it? For me, if you know me, we are disciples who humbly honour the Holy Spirit in our midst. You see, there is a dance that brings heaven and earth together. There is a humility when we dance before the Lord and as we humble ourselves and gives, give glory to Jesus, He beautifies His people. There's something beautiful that starts to happen by the Holy Spirit. Isaiah says this, he says He gives the joy, oil of joy for mourning. So we, we can't, might come in mourning, but as He beautifies us, as His presence comes, joy wells up. He says, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And you might come in, you know, we talked last week about all the reasons you'll come to church. You may have had a row in the car. You may have had a bad week. But as we come in, He literally puts a coat of praise on us. It's like, you know, we, we don't do it any, any, anymore because notices are all on, online. But you used to come into church and get a notice sheet. You remember that? You'd walk in and they'd hand you a bit of paper. It was like a menu, tell you everything that was going to go on. Well, actually what happens is when you walk in the church, you get a garment of praise. You get a coat. Holy Spirit puts it on you so that you can celebrate what He's doing. That, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He might be glorified. You see, it's the humble that are planted and all the glory goes to Jesus. And it's interesting that then David says, but, but I'm going to be honoured by the, the very maidservants that you're worried that I made a fool of myself in front of. Why? Because God used David to deliver them, to rescue them, to heal them, to win their battles. And, and he says, you know, the, the honour will come from here as I give all the glory to God and as I worship Him and as I dance before Him. So what was the result? Almost done. Well, firstly, the whole nation of Israel is fed. I don't think there's ever an account, another account in the Scriptures where a whole nation is fed. David dances before the Lord and the Lord enables him to feed the nation. Verse 19, Then he distributed among all the people among the whole multitude of Israel, both women and men, the writer's trying to make a point here, to everyone a loaf of bread, a piece of meat and a cake of raisins. So all the people departed everyone to his house. You see, when God's people dance in his presence, a nation can be fed. When we start to dance, the power of God to feed a nation is released. I believe that dance is a prophetic action of throwing off everything that hinders us. I believe if we can learn to unashamedly dance in His presence, this nation can be fed by the Holy Spirit. This nation can be changed. This is a movement of joy. It is, it is a movement of His salvation. Jeremiah tells us that in hard times, there's always a remnant. 
You know, we might look around and go, you know, what is, what is happening in the Christian church? But Jeremiah says, there is always a remnant. Jeremiah 31 says this, Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance and the young men and the old together. For I will turn their mourning to joy, will comfort them and make them rejoice rather than sorrow. I will satiate the soul of the priests with abundance. There's gonna be so much blessing and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. We, um, each Tuesday we, we meet for prayer and worship and it's a, it's a fun thing. And um, one, I, I don't know how long ago it was, six months, may even have been longer. That, that week I talked separately to three of our guys and they were having a, a really hard time. Um, I think one had lost their job, one had a court case, one needed some money. And, and, and it, I mean, it was big stuff. And, and they, were, they were really down. And I said, I said to them all, you've got to come to revival prayer. Come to prayer. And, um, you know, God's there. You need to, you, if you need a miracle, you, need, you just need to be there. You need to be in His presence. Anyway, I looked up on the Tuesday and there they were. And we were all worshipping everyone. Everyone kind of just gets lost and doing their own thing. And the Holy Spirit said to me, <laughs> He said, get them down the front dancing. And I remember just thinking, Lord, they've had a really bad week. They're really not going to enjoy this. This is not going to be at the top of their list of what they wanted to do, but it wouldn't go away. He kept saying, no, I want them at the front dancing. So I, uh, I think it was Joel leading that night. I turned around and I said to him, just keep playing. I think it's going to get weird. And, he, and he, I remember him going, how weird? I went, it's really weird. <laughs> and I said, okay, guys, um, you, you, you. I said, come on down here. So they, they dutifully walked down. And I said, I just saw a picture of you doing a round dance at the front here. You have never, well, I felt quite a lot of, unbelief and dislike towards me coming. And I got a couple of girls, I think one of the wives was there, I said, just grab their hands, they need a bit of help. We're just gonna do a little round dance at the front. Don't worry, it's gonna be great. And so we started doing it and I want you to know they did not go into this 100%. All right, there were frowns on their faces. And I'm like thinking they're never gonna speak to me ever again. And, 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 you know, they start dancing and everyone, you know, so they're going round and they're, 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 the, the, the girls are, yeah, let's do this. The guys are, let's, I'm just, <laughs> you know, it, really, it was a bit like that. And they're, they're, they're twirling them round and then everybody started doing it. So it started breaking out and there's loads of people doing dance. Some of you would have been, would have been there. And, um, and I, 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 at the end, it was all over. And at the end, I went up to, one of them I missed, I had to phone and just going, we're still friends, right? And they said, barely. <laughs> I want you to tell you something. Each one of those guys, their situation turned around literally in the next week. The next week, it just turned around. You see, why am I telling you that? You see, when we humble ourselves before the Lord, it releases His blessing and power. He can do anything. He didn't need to have them doing a round dance. But David knew, I'll become, in your presence, Lord, I'll become even more undignified than this because I can't do this. I need your power in my life. We can't change this nation. We can't bring revival. Only He can. Only He can change a nation. We can't save anybody. Only He saves people. But we come into His presence humbly, rejoicing and celebrating, and it releases His resource and power. Secondly, and we'll, we'll finish on this, David is despised by Michael, Saul's daughter. Michael looks at David's worship and she despises him in her heart. If you worship 110%, sometimes people will despise you. They'll think you're crazy. Do you know, it's really interesting that Saul was once counted amongst the prophets, do you remember? And he was doing all that crazy stuff. His reign started with worship and dancing. Now his daughter despises David for unashamedly worshipping the Lord. And when people see us 
worshipping, often what the Lord does, it reminds us when we, when we see people just lost in the Lord's presence, it reminds us of maybe where we were once or where we should be. And do you know what? Sometimes our heart despises it. Well, that looked just, that looked just stupid. That's so foolish. I'd never do that. I'd never make such a fool of myself. That's what Michael did in our heart. And you know, when we feel that and when I feel that, we need somebody to grab us by the hand and go, we're going in. <laughs> Come on, let's just get in there. <laughs> and and uh, last week, one of the guys in the 9.30 service, uh, they were all praising, he grabbed me and he just twirled me round. I got my own back earlier. <laughs> okay, but you see, when our heart is on the turn, when somebody grabs us and goes, no, we just get in, just get into it, it turns it back. You, look, you cannot over-worship, but you can under-worship. You cannot over-give, but you can under-give. And, and, and if, if our heart is, is turning, we need to run in, not run out. Because the presence of the Lord is where the humble worship and celebrate His presence. And I was just thinking, you know, what stops me dancing? Because I'm, I'm like... <laughs> You're talking about, you know, look, I'm a white guy. I'm like this. You know, I, I, and this is when it's really getting going. <laughs> I mean, inside, I'm like, <sighs> but, you know, and, and you know, even when people sway me, it's, <laughs> it's true. And, and the truth is, I, I, you know, I'm dancing inside, but I just feel so self-conscious. It's like everybody's staring at me. I mean, nobody even cares less in this place. You can't even see two, three rows back. So what is it? But that's what it feels like. It feels like everybody's watching me. And then I just don't have any moves. I don't have any steps. You know, there's two words, two, two of the main words for dance in the Bible. Uh, uh, um, kara, which means jumping and whirling. And, but um, Meho is spelled M-A-H-O-L. It's more of a round dance. There's instructions. I like round dance because I just have to follow what the person next to me is doing. And, and so, so a, a lot of the time um, in the Scriptures where the dance is breaking out, it was this round dance. It's what I got the guys to do. You know, where, where people are holding hands or, the, or, or where we're just following the instructions. I can follow instructions. Not very well, but I can do it to step in. Why don't I dance? Because I don't have the moves and I feel self-conscious. I've got to get over myself and, and look to Him. I'm learning to do that. But I also need someone to teach me the moves so I don't look a complete fool. And we're going to do that in a minute. All right, and I, and just, you know, and uh, I, I mentioned, you know, just earlier in the offering about, um, you know, the building and we have to, you know, we've been trying to buy it for 10 years and, it, you know, there are some opportunities that are opening up. We have a, there's, there's two ways of going into this. We can do cake sales, and we can beat you every week, give more money, give more me money, or we can dance it in. We can celebrate it in. So I decided to go the cake sale route. No. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't. I, I, I just, I just look, Lord, if you're going to do this, do a miracle. Do a miracle, Lord. The gold's yours, the silver's yours. We're going to celebrate so why don't you all stand? No one should feel safe now. 
Let's have the band back. But first, first, if you're here this morning, you've never given your life to Jesus. Okay, you've been in the worship. We've explained to you um, that Jesus came so that you could have a brand new life, that all you've ever done could be forgiven and that you could live for Him. And sometimes people go, well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a, a Christian. Well, you know if you've given your life to Jesus because you know that when you leave this earth, when you die and you stand before Him, everything's okay. You have that assurance in your life that you're gonna be fine because He's paid for it all. And if you don't have that assurance, if you don't know, if you've never said, Jesus, I wanna follow you, for all of my life. I want you to be Lord of my life. I'm gonna give you an opportunity now. And the way we, we, we do it here is we just walk down the front. And you may have been bought by a friend. Maybe you did this like 100 years ago and you know you need to come home. But if you've never given your life to Jesus, come on down. You know you want Jesus in your life. You know you want this joy. You want this forgiveness. You want this new life. Come on down. And we're going to introduce you to the Lord Jesus. Where are you? Come on down. This is, the, this is the deal. This is the best thing ever. This is where the celebration starts. When we walk into His kingdom, His courts. So if that's you, come on down. Someone bought you, they're probably, the reason they're poking you is they're saying, get down there. They'll come, just bring them with you. It's okay, you can come down with someone. But this is, this is the deal. So if you're here this morning, you need Jesus, come on down. Where are you? I know you're praying, just someone go before me. I tell you, it's gonna get a lot worse in a minute because we're going to have them dancing. But this is the first step. Give your life to Jesus. This is where it starts, where I, I walk up in front of everyone and go, I, I need Jesus in my life. We've all done it. Lord, I thank You for Your presence. And Holy Spirit, I thank You that You're, you're stirring some hearts. I know their feet feel like lead, but bring them down, Lord. Bring them down. Where are You? summer. There's a, there are a few this morning. There's a few here. But we can do it another week or you can come now. wait is I don't move on till I feel the Lord said I can move on. It's important.
Okay. Oh, there you go. Hello. We were waiting for you. <laughs> What's your name? Scylla. Scylla. Gonna, we're going to all say a prayer, okay? And we're going we're gonna to say it together. Lord Jesus, Jesus, I thank you that you've given your life for me. And I invite you in now so that I know in my Noah that when I stand before you, going to be okay because you've forgiven me you've died for me you love me and I will walk with you all the days of my life so Lord I pray just bless her and fill her bless her and fill her Lord and Lord I, I just pray for that blessed assurance that she would know that she's pure, clean, spotless before you and that you have her life in your hands in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. So, um, band are here, Omar, Sydney. Where are you? Now, I talked about I talked about moves. Okay, these guys have moves, and we're going to finish this morning with some dance lessons. Okay, and um, obviously, I don't want to be on my own. So, Richard Gamble, if you're still in the building, get down here. Come on. <laughs> this is my friend Richard. I want, I want, I want some guys, okay? <laughs> they're about to, they're about to. And you're willing to enter the dance class of the Holy Spirit. Come on down and join us, okay? The rest of you can join us in a minute. Come on. Because I know for some of us this is hard. Come on. Folks, welcome to church. Come on, spread out. Spread out over here. Spread out. Come on. And now, Omar, Sydney Band, help us out, please.
Lovers of Jesus gathered in freedom And boldly we call his invitation Here come the dancers, watch as the gates fling wide
Jesus one more time. God, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. We worship you, Jesus, because you have saved us and we give everything to you. And you know, the party doesn't stop here. As we leave from this place, we take the joy of the Lord wherever we go as His Gospel is preached on this nation. Amen. good to party with you this morning. You are welcome to come back at 5.30pm. Just a couple of things. If you have children, do go and get them from Children's Ministry and thank the children's pastors for looking after them this morning. And then parents, get your kids, get your youth to Chosen and the Holiday Club, which is this week. You can sign up for them out there. Have an amazing week. We love you. We're going to be thinner by the end and we'll see you next week.